Hello, my name is Stephen Cohn. I'm talking about uh, uranium ex extraction from seawater program at uh, this time. And uh, my contact information uh, here is uh, my email address and the phone number. Feel free to contact us for technical questions. Fuel resource is, uh, is one of the integrated approach we have in the Office of uh, uh, Fuel Cycle Technology. We have, uh, in the front end, we have a uranium resource program. In this area, we cover unconventional uh, production of uranium. For uh, specifically, we, we, we are focusing on uranium extraction from seawater. And this program mandate and the mission are listed here. Basically, I'll read this one. The availability of fuel resource for each potential fuel cycle and the reactor deployment scenario must be understood. Involvement in this area would be R&D to support investigation of long-term game-changing approach, such as recovering uranium from seawater. This is stated in DOE Nuclear Energy R&D Roadmap. Our program mission is to identify and implement action the Department of Energy can take to assure the economic nuclear fuel resource remain available for current and future uh, nuclear fuel cycles. So then why study uranium from seawater? Uh, there are plenty of uranium in the ocean. Estimate there are about 4.5 billion tons of uranium in the, in the ocean. And then this will provide centuries of uh, uh, uranium supply, even with uh, the most aggressive uh, use of uh, nuclear energy uh, for civil nuclear energy application, uh, without repossess in this case. And then also we like to address seawater uranium would provide a price cap which will limit the cost for other technologies. So in this case, if you have an unlimited supply of uranium, then we, uh, we will limit other technology costs in this case. And the most challenging part is low concentration. It's about 3.3 .3 billion uh, PPBs, billion, uh, parts per billion. So previous research on extraction of uranium from seawater includes uh, the UK started about uh, the effort over 60 years ago. And then other countries followed suit in about the 1970s, uh, 80s, 70s, and 80s. And then the material and technology included in this area are uh, solvent extraction, inorganic absorbents, polymer absorbents, and the biomass collections. And um, early focus on high, uh, titanium dioxide, it shows a very high cost for pumping this seawater through the, 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 the sorbent material, and also the low absorption capacity and the poor stability of titanium oxide that uh, terminate this kind of research in the, in, the, in the 70s. So that's very important. So if we need to pump the seawater, then the energy cost is much more than what we need to, we generate from uranium in this case. So the Japanese actually started this er very early on. They, they started in the 80s. Here shows some, a couple Japanese uh, results here. The Japanese um, estimate about uh, the, the, the Japan current, uh, as you can see from the pink curve in, uh, from the left side. Uh, it started about from about Philippine, Philippines and then uh, passing through this uh, east of uh, Taiwan and then Okinawa area and then go to Japan. In fact, that's all the way to Alaska area. This current will, pass, will go that far. And then the Japanese estimate about uh, five, over 5 million tons of uranium uh, carry through this current each year. So if they can attract a small percentage of this uh, uranium from this current, they, can, they don't need to import any uranium from other country. So that's, that's one of the reasons they, they developed this technology in the early 80s and the, and the 90s. And then for, the, for us, the, in the U.S., we have Gulf Current, which starting about us uh, from Florida and then passing through North Carolina and the, all the way to, in fact, all the way to, to Great Britain. So in this case, we have much stronger current in, in, the, in the East Coast. And then in the West Coast, we also have some co cold current as well. So in this case, we can have uh, plenty of uranium uh, uh, resource. For, for the U.S. to use. 
And then on the right right hand side is demonstrate that this is a one of the plot uh, Dr. Tamada provide to us. Is, uh, he studied uh, the absorbent material using stack method and also braided method. In the red line shows the braided material. They have about 1.5 gram per kilogram of material. That basically one kilogram of absorbent material will absorb about uh, 1.5 gram of uranium. And then they also have a stacking method that's about 0.5 gram per kilogram. And also noted here is um, titanium dioxide, which we use pump method. Uh, only have probably point around 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 uh, uh, gram per kilogram. So very important. So in this case, the Japanese using a passive method. They are not using pump and tr the pumping method. In this case, as you can see, the, the following slide here, they, they had to conduct a, a experiment near Oki Okinawa marine experiments here. What they did is just just uh, sinking a, a absorbent material like a kelp, and then just put a, a, a remote control device at the bottom. And then what, after 30 days uh, uh, sink, uh, uh, floating in the ocean, then they, they send a signal. So the material will, uh, the absorbent material will float to the surface and then they collect it. So in this case, in the, in the left hand side, you can see they start collecting these absorbent materials. So for, for us, what is the R&D opportunities here? We want to increase the sorption capacity and selectivity in seawater environment. In this case, uh, we like to increase the surface area of functional group densities. Uh, we can increase the crafting efficiency and also enhance ligand design. And second item we like to 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 solicit is uh, enhance sol uh, absorbent durability. So increase the number of recycle because the Japanese study uh, tells us about 80% of the material uh, of the the technology cost comes from the material itself. So if we can repeatedly use this material over and over again it will help us to reduce the technology cost. So that's why we want to address the durability so, and the reusability. The third item is improve the uranium stripping technology. The Japanese using a strong acid. In this case, they will damage the absorbent material. So in this, they will reduce the absorption capacity during the second round. So if we can use a much milder method, such as a carbonated solution or supercritical CO2 method to extract this uh, uranium from the absorbent material, it will enhance the, the reusability of the, the material. And the fourth item is understand the absorption mechanism, the kinetics and thermodynamics. In this case, we can better design a better material for uranium absorption. And last one is uh, inhibi inhibition of bioforming. In this case, we can enhance the material durability in ocean environment, so there's no microbial uh, or, uh, or some kind of uh, bioactivity uh, to impact on our absorbent, uh, absorption capacities. And very lastly, we have a diagram to show our program current emphasis. Here you can see eight boxes. They are the, the, the emphasis uh, thrust areas we are focusing on. And I also list here is the uh, laboratory uh, contact person for, for these areas. So you may feel free to contact those people for technical questions. I think that's it for my presentation. I would like to entertain questions. Thank you. Is the MSFC2 work scope restricted to seawater uranium extraction, or could other green uranium mining methods be considered? Uh, our current focus is uranium extraction from seawater. Other technology is un uh, conventional uh, resources we are not considered under this solicitation. Is there interest in developing new technologies for uranium extraction or only optimizing the Japanese technology? Both. We are reaching both. Uh, we are trying to improve the amino doxing. So that's the, amin uh, the uh, functional group the Japanese and the German developed uh, in the 80s and still widely used in the world community. But we also develop different functional groups or different kind of materials using different technology to prepare those absorbent materials. So both, we welcome uh, ideas in both areas. Seawater extraction has been an emphasis for many NEUP cycles. Does this mean that, that researchers have not found a good solution yet? I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, it's been around D for a long time. 
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, why we are re re what's, what's why the renew interest in this area? Because in the past 20 years, we have some nano science or nanotechnology or even computation technology significantly uh, improved. So in the 80s, there's, we don't have that kind of knowledge or, or, or uh, technology available to us. Now we want to revisit this issue and then to see whether we can make a big uh, 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 quantum leap in this area or not. So that's why we are doing this as a kind of, uh, initially we do the three years. We have a project goal to set a double the Japanese in three years. And then we, 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 we reach that goal this year. So now we are going to push further to see whether how far we can reach in that area. So that's, uh, I hope that addressed the question. Are there proliferation issues associated with uranium seawater extraction? Uh, actually, no. Mining is not considered sensitive nuclear technology, as you may know that. So this is kind of mining technology.